I've always been a pretty big Samira fan for her ability to break the classic rules of AD carries and give an alternate, rewarding playstyle. Effectively being AD carry Katarina with a couple of Glocks thrown onto her, Samira thrives off of taking insane risks and using her fast abilities and mobility to compensate. Playing front to back won't work here on this champion, you need to know when to pull the trigger and actively try to do so in order to succeed. Here's a quick breakdown of how we'll be going over this video. I'll touch on general concepts of Samira's purpose as a champion and what success looks like in games that you're doing well on her. We'll then discuss different components of her kit and how we can work better to optimize each one of these. This includes going over different matchups, rune optimizations, ability maxing, your build, pathing, and how to play out each phase of the game. By the way, if you enjoyed this video, would really appreciate a like on it if it helped you out. Before we totally jump into breaking down Samira's kit, I actually wanted to quickly touch on times to pick her. I'm a big advocate for just playing who you like, especially in solo queue, but it doesn't mean we can ignore the importance of understanding a little bit about the draft element in situations in which champs are more or less the optimal to pick. Samira is a classic example of this because there are cases where she can be an absolutely disgusting pick and times where she can be a disgustingly bad pick. So let's talk why Samira can be so strong, especially in a solo queue environment that most players will be able to take advantage of her. Contrary to how most AD carry players usually feel in the role, Samira immediately gets a ton of agency and freedom to maneuver around fights, and take advantage of enemy mispositioning. Because of this, and just the fact that she can deal a metric shit ton of damage in teamfights, she really thrives in chaos and gives a lot of agency back to the individual player. See an angle that would be ideal for an engage, you probably are able to handle it yourself. This gets enabled first from her rune setup, which will pretty much be consistent in every game. Start with the Conqueror Keystone, and then you can take the runes that best enable the engaged playstyle that she brings. Triumph, Legend Bloodline, and Coup de Gras or Cutdown for tankier teams are going to be your bread and butter runes here. This will always follow up with a secondary take in the Domination Tree, with Taste of Blood and Treasure Hunter to allow Samira to stabilize her laning phase, and when the time comes, really take hold of the game and begin to carry. Samira's rune setups and build paths both allow her to thrive in times of need, but also cause her to struggle and make her playstyle one dimensional. This starts off with her one real mythic choice in most situations, which is Immortal Shield Bow. It's an amazing item because it essentially gives Samira a great start to a mid game spike, damage, sustain, and survivability. Shield Bolt also gains an edge versus most of her other mythic options because of the lifesteal component, which Samira scales incredibly well with thanks to her ultimate turning her into a drain tank. After this, you've pretty much got two main paths for your crit focus build. Samira is a rare case of an AD carry that doesn't need to build attack speed at all, so you instead focus everything you've got into damage. Your second item is likely going to be Infinity Edge, and from there you have a slew of options depending on what you feel like you need. Collector and LDR make for great options for overall damage, Bloodthruster is an excellent take since it effectively turns you into a drain tank, and if you need even more defensive options, you can opt for items like Guardian Angel to round yourself off in that department. Laning on Samira is a bit dynamic like other kill threat AD carries, in the sense that she doesn't have that much laning capability by herself, but if her support can capitalize on the mistakes that the enemy is making, then she can really drive the game home. You should only really be trading around your taste of blood cooldown to minimize the damage, and otherwise you're just looking to farm and create advantageous wave states. You want more room in the lane to engage and take trades, so unless you immediately need prowl for another situation on the map, I would recommend that you generally keep the wave on your side to both give that space for yourself and prevent yourself from getting frozen on. Samira has a really short auto range at 500, and she doesn't have any long range tools to break freezes, so that's something to keep in mind here. If you have an engaged support, you're generally going to play off of them and engage on whoever they hit. If you have an enchanter support with you, well that's a little bit unlucky since they don't pair well with Samira in that case, but the onus will probably be on you to get something started in that case instead. It won't always be that easy for Samira to thrive in lane either, depending on who she's up against. Since her ultimate can be cancelled by CC quite often, champions that can either disrupt her in lane or that can keep up with her damage and the style that she wants to play make it very hard for her to succeed. For example, she tends to suffer greatly against Caitlyn since Samira's range is only 500 and she has a 150 range deficit against Caitlyn's 650. This just makes it so hard for her to even walk up in general without taking her ass. Neela gives her the opposite problem. Samira outranges her here, but Neela has a lot of great tools herself to both negate Samira's damage and even disrupt her ultimate. Zaya can also be tough for a similar reason here. On the support side, really tanky champions or champions with a lot of peel or disruption tools make her life a little bit hard. Braum and Tom Kench can give the enemy AD carry free outs, and enchanters like Lulu or Renata can make her in and out style harder to execute. Most other AD carries will be a decent matchup however, since she'll generally be able to punish. Once you or your support decides to engage in whatever scenario, now we rely on the execution of your abilities in order to succeed and deal damage. Your combos on Samira will be heavily based around weaving your auto attacks. I wouldn't really worry too much about nailing your combos in a specific way, just more so keeping track of how many different casts you are away from hitting your S rank, and then using your ultimate right away when that situation comes up. To start off, here's the fastest way to get your S rank. The combo is auto into W1, then EQing into letting your W2 proc, using your auto again, and using your ultimate. This combo takes advantage of both parts of your W, which is really unique, when most other combos wouldn't be able to do so. An alternative version that's going to be more realistic is auto Q, auto E, auto W, R. This combo only uses one part of your W, but you can cancel your W with your ultimate to instantly cast it. This is also the more common combo you'll be using since this allows you to take advantage of playing slower at first and then stepping in when you see an opportunity. Weaving is also the name of the game here in general because the movement speed 
speed that this gives you will be key to keeping up with your enemies and skirmishers as well. Feel free to stray away from these main combos and just go with more of a free flow style. As long as you're alternating your abilities and auto attacks to quickly build rank, that's the biggest takeaway I have for you. Overall, Samir is an awesome AD carry to pick up if you're looking for a style that rewards aggressive play and creative playmaking. As always, hope this video was insightful to you guys, and I'll catch you in the next one. Safe rush.